What's up guys, JP back at you once again bringing you guys day number 22 in my 6th annual 31 Days of Horror. This is a series in which we watch and review 31 horror films in 31 days all during the month of October leading right up to Halloween and continuing along with today's film, uh, I wanted to continue to watch films that made our top 100 greatest horror films of all time uh, for episode 100 of the 22 Shots of Moods and Horror podcast. There was a few handful of films on there that I had never seen that was mostly picked by Jeremy and Moods. And one of the big ones on that list was 1980s, I believe, Cannibal Holocaust. Uh, this is a film that is notorious. Uh, it's a film that everybody knows, everybody's heard about. Uh, it is a film that was, you know, banned in many countries and things like that. Now, uh, I will say I do have the Grindhouse Blu-ray here. Um, I do have the slipcover. I just don't know where I stuck it. Uh, but anyway, this film follows... It, it's kind of told in two parts, really. It's told in a part where a... Um, journalist goes to find footage of a documentary film crew uh, who basically got lost in the jungle uh, where there is you know these indigenous people uh, cannibals and they must go retrieve this footage he brings it back and then that's when the found footage part of the film starts where you're kind of watching uh, the footage that these filmmakers had captured and uh, you know the the basic um, what happened to them the you know found footage aspect of the film uh, which I thought was a pretty cool setup like I'd always heard that this film was found footage and I was like okay and I started watching it I'm like this is not found footage you know this is like there's clearly camera shots and cuts here that that doesn't make sense for there to be a cameraman here uh, but then it actually kicks into the found footage later so like it's an actual found footage film it's probably where the term you know came from I, or you know maybe Blair Witch popularized it but uh, this film definitely um, is is you know the like literally finding footage you know um, and I like the aspect of the film where it's like they show um, a actual movie of them finding footage you know it's it's like kind of a interesting way to tell that story uh, now this movie is known for a few things obviously uh, it is very violent it is very brutal it is very raw there are actual animal killings in this film there's a turtle a monkey a pig a snake a couple other animals that that are you know killed on screen and mutilated on screen uh, I do know that, you know, outside of the film, I believe that these animals were later eaten by people um, to, you know, semi-justify their death. Uh, I'm not going to get into whether it's good or bad to kill animals on screen. I think we could all agree that it's bad, but I'm not going to get into um, how I feel about it done in older films, at, you know, different time and different place like that. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of it, obviously, um, but I understand... Um, that it was a different time uh, so those scenes are definitely hard to watch I think without those scenes the film does lose some of its feel and impact there is on this blu-ray a animal uh, killing free version of the film um, but I almost feel like those scenes are a necessity to the rawness of this movie to be as effective as it is. Um, you take those scenes out, I think it is less effective. However, if you are very squeamish or, you know, very uh, emotional about animal killings, you definitely probably don't want to watch this movie because it's probably the more brutal that I've seen. I've seen a few uh, actual, you know, animal killings and mutilations in films. And this one, you know, was pretty rough. You know, the, the turtle especially was rough for me. Um, so that, you know, that's very upsetting. Uh, the film itself, this was the biggest surprise for me. The film is shot really well. Like, even the found footage part is shot really, really well. Uh, the actual, you know, editing and music... Uh, is absolutely perfect. The visuals in this film are, dare I say it, beautiful. It is a beautiful movie. Like, I was 
really surprised. And the Grindhouse Blu-ray definitely lets you get the full scope of the things that I'm saying here. Uh, I was very, very surprised at the beauty of this film uh, all around, all around really. Like, it, it I did not expect that at all. Like, I figured this would be like super low budget and, and more shoddy. Um, you know, for an Italian film too, which uh, I shouldn't be surprised that they are really beautiful and things like that, but I guess I, I, I was a little surprised here. Uh, I expected it to be more schlocky, you know what I mean? More like an exploitation film, like an Elsa or something like that, you know? It's a film that's not really, that's very exploitive, doesn't really care about the art, but I, I feel like this film does have a lot of art to it. And uh, I'll also say that, um, there's some great scenes in this movie. There's one shot in particular where the music's playing and they're burning, the, the Americans or the filmmakers are burning down the uh, indigenous tribes camp, um, which is just like masterfully done. Like, I'm not even gonna lie, like that scene is masterfully done with the amazing Cannibal Holocaust score uh, and the uh, awesome uh, visuals there. Uh, it's, it's, it's a good scene, you know, it really emotes uh, this feeling of, you know, dread and sadness and anger towards these people, uh, and it's, you know, a lot of, there's a lot of social commentary in this film, obviously. You might look at it now and be like, well, that's very, you know, heavy-handed, um, the way that it's pushed in there, because it's, it's very obvious that that's what the director is saying, but it's, I still understand why it's, you know, a, a uh, very you know, important type of social commentary about, you know, who is the real cannibals. I think they might even say that in the film. Um, but yeah, it's, it's obviously, um, you know, bad people going in and, uh, terrorizing, you know, people who are naive and, um, innocent kind of. Uh, so that's bad, right? And I think that the biggest problem with this movie is they push that narrative a little too hard. Um, it seems like that the filmmakers are way too bad. It just doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel like it's natural. It feels like it's a little forced. It feels like it's a little bit too much, you know, like they were trying to be too evil, you know, where it just comes off like, okay, like this, this is a little ridiculous. It's kind of hard to believe that people would be this evil. You know what I mean? Like really gets gets, you know, bad, um, with, with how evil they are, and I feel like it pushed it a little too much, and, um, yeah, I mean, I think that that is probably my biggest problem with the film, but other than that, I think it is an amazing movie, uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and give it a 9 out of 10, that's right, 9 out of 10 for Campbell Holocaust, uh, it's, it's a great film, it really is, and, and it influenced a ton of films, and I actually now see why it, made it so high in our top 100 list um, because of its influence and the criteria that we use. But uh, that is it for today's review, guys. I will see you next time. Peace out.